We are life, life bearers, life bringers, mothers of life. We are life, life bearers, life bringers, mothers of life. We are life, life bearers, life bringers, mothers of life. We are life, life bearers, life bringers, mothers of life. I just see huge strength in these women. I can't even imagine how they've endured the things that I know that, that that's happened to them to continue just to like, you know, walk upright. But I, I think they told their story like it was their lifeline. If you chose to put yourself in front of it, to listen to it, to bear witness, you have a responsibility. Whatever privilege, whatever opportunity I had, I had to use for them. That's why I painted these women. Oh my God. I've never seen that before. <laughs> I guess I felt like that. In 2008, yeah, I was heavily into my tree series and that was quite successful. I was working with a dealer and he would sort of broker the deals with other galleries that would purchase the paintings or they'd be on consignment through him. In the beginning, I loved the challenge. I loved to push myself to see what I was capable of creating. But after a while, the demand was never enough. And then that created a feeling that felt dirty for me as a creative. I was going up to my studio to create and I, Jeff got a message or a phone call from my agent and I could just physically feel the blood starting to boil because it was some demand that I just, it just did not sit right with me me and I remember walking up the the hill to my studio and feeling just such frustration in my body and I picked up a rock and I threw it <laughs> and I just thought whoa that is the epitome of uh you know you are not in the right place this is not like sitting with you anymore so I, that's when I had a talk with Jeff and said I can't do it anymore to do something, to tell their truth, knowing they matter. I gave my work over to them, the ones who we are, the ones who lived and the ones who died. My art always had been connected to this feeling of giving. I would donate paintings to art auctions and they did really well. Uh, this felt fantastic that I was able to give something. I didn't, I might not be able to contribute financially, but I could donate a painting and it could raise three to four or $5,000. 
in 2007, 2008, I was asked by three different organizations that were raising funds for different projects in Africa by local people. I then started uh, volunteering a bit, donating paintings, but also volunteering my time and energy. I'd read a book about the women of the Congo and how it told about their stories of their lives and what they had endured. And I thought, no one knows about this. Like, no one's talking about this. How can this, how can this be happening? And that's what led me and my friend, Dr. Karen Yates, to go to the Congo. We had both read the same book. I've never met people who are so open and loving. I'm, we're speaking a language that's not of words, that we're relating to one another through an emotion, through a shared experience, through an energy field of dance, song, just being together. What I feel from them is that we all, that, that, that inclusiveness, that we are all one big human race. So it's this huge contradiction to what I believe to be true or what I had been told by the media about the Congo. This narrative of violence, although it's prevalent in the, the experiences of the people, it's not the people. The people I know, majority of them have fled from their villages where they were farmers, living a peaceful life. But the, the, the ongoing violence in the Congo entered their villages and the rebels <laughs> forced them out. They killed their husbands, they slaughtered their children, they raped the women and they ran for their lives. The thread of violence and death is hard to fathom in, our, in comparison to our world. There was a woman uh, she was wearing a surgical mask, which we've all come so used to seeing. So when she would pull down her surgical mask and all you saw were her teeth without her lips. And she had been, they had been cut off by the rebels. And she kept coming to me and, and pulling down her, her mask to show me. And it was like, tell them. She knew that this wasn't, this wasn't right. That this was not how human beings should be treated. And she had this fierce in her eyes, this strength that was like, you tell them, you tell them what's happening here. And I think, I think that really, uh, changed me. And that's where my fire comes from. This is who we should be honoring, not uh, commercial consumption and, you know, the things that we idolize. These are the, these are the kind of idols we should have, the women like this, who are doing something, who are, who've survived something, they're resilient, they had a dream, and they spoke their truth, which was very difficult, in order to, you know, change their, their future, and they did. And I think that's amazing, and I'm just lucky to be part of that journey with them. And the next day, we were leaving. We are flying out of Kigali in Rwanda that night. Uh, but that, that afternoon, I was leaving the country and went into um, this hotel. I was supposed to have an a interview with a woman. And that didn't happen on time, but I met a man there. I didn't think much about this interaction, you know, but I know I was raw and I was very open. And uh, it was nice just to, to share a moment with him. He said, 
you, you know what happens to the children of those women who don't make it. And then he started telling me about the, all the children who were on the streets and had no network, no nowhere to go, would be, you know, kidnapped for child soldier to become child soldiers. They were just so vulnerable. And he had, he was looking after 16. That's when I decided I was going to help him and raise money to build a home for those 16 kids. I don't know how, but I'm going to use my art in some way. My mind, my rational mind was saying, like, you shouldn't do this. This doesn't make sense. You've met this man for, you know, maybe an hour or two. But my gut was burning. So I sent the money and they began building the home. And one year to the date that I met Kazungu, January 10th, the kids moved into that home. The 16 children had now turned to 80 kids. <laughs> I had never used photographs in my work until after my very first trip to Uganda, to Africa. It was the people I wanted to represent. They were, it was the people who affected me, and uh, I struggled, like, how am I to do that? I'm not a portrait artist. I'm a very um, tactile artist. I like to move fluidly and react to a gesture here and a gesture there, and, and I get inside of it, and it, it, it's beyond my thinking mind. I'm, I'm reactive. The tools I had were a printer, my digital images, and my computer, and uh, I just started experimenting. You know, I was able to put my raw emotions into those paintings, and what was the hardest part for me and where I, I recognized where I was stepping into something uncomfortable is writing those kids' stories or their parents' mother's stories. It was very confronting. <laughs> so I knew I wasn't painting paintings that were necessarily going to look nice on the wall when it could say, my mother was raped by four men walking home from school. One of those men is my father. I can't even read that without tearing up. So how can I tell that story? How can I tell that story to people? They don't want to hear that. But they might look at a beautiful painting of a beautiful child and walk up and then read that and go, Ooh, I just got kicked in the gut. So I, I, was, I was getting closer a few weeks out from my, the show scheduled date and I had 15 paintings painted of the kids, so all in uniform size. And at 15, I'm gonna lay them out and, and create some social media posts of them, like a lineup of them, just something effective. And that's when I put them into a square of five, 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 like three rows of five, so it created a bit of a square. And it was like, bam! You have to paint all 80. I carried that momentum and commitment through three years of painting those paintings. And that's where the wall of courage came from. I was able to show the wall maybe six times publicly. And we were making headway and then the pandemic hit.
Every day I need to ground myself, clear my mind. So it, I have a meditation space in my bedroom. In that space I have the women from that first trip to remind myself why, my, what my purpose is. Especially during the pandemic, you know, we can lose ourselves so quickly and, and uh, numb ourselves with Netflix or TV or whatever. But instead of, you know, sort of crawling into a hole, I just began painting. I can't, I haven't traveled to Congo for many years now. One of the older Chikudu kids, who's now 18, she started taking photographs for me. And then I was using, I began using those in my work. That has become an incredible collaboration through Lucien's eyes, through the, the images she's able to capture of the young girls empowered in front of this, you know, older sister of theirs. If we empower these young girls, they're the future. They can, they are our leaders. Imagine if we empowered them. Within the Wall of Courage, it tells the story of the mothers who are lost. So this is, the, this represents the mothers that survived. They are the mothers of those children on the wall now. This is what the balance of the Wall of Courage would be. It would tell the women's story, their strength, and who those girls in the wall will become. You know, some of those girls are already adults now. They are part of this culture and these women's story now. I, it's in the room, I recognize it. I'm not naive to, you know, the difference in, in our skin color and the privilege and how that might be perceived. But I, you know, and I've thought of not painting. Like I've, I've thought of, do I, you know, who am I to, to paint? Do, is this my place? And if I don't, I don't know what happens to them. So I keep painting. When I paint these paintings, there's, a, there's an energy in me that feels like it was predestined. I don't know what that means, where that, what that, kind of like when I was painting the Wall of Courage, I, I knew it, it, it meant something bigger than I could imagine. So it's, it's off in the future. It's like they exist somewhere already and I'm just unraveling it. This is the direction I'm supposed to go in. This is the work I am meant to pursue. This is what everything I've worked for, I'm supposed to take and move forward. I, ha I can't keep my, I can't take my eye, eye off the ball. I have 140 kids relying on me to show up. I don't even know if it's good. I mean, I really don't. But I know that it's honest. And from the beginning of my career, it was sort of like my motto when I first started out, with, when there was great vulnerabilities. They don't have to like the work, but they gotta respect the shit out of me for trying. Because I'm gonna keep trying. <laughs> We are life. Life bears. Life bringers.
mothers of life. <laughs>